Okay, so I got contacted recently by Wimaxit and they offered me this 14 inch display in exchange for me doing a review. So I haven't paid for this display, uh, but these views are my own. They haven't told me to say anything. They've just sent me the display to have a look at and uh, I've been really impressed so far. So this is what it looks like. Uh, so size wise, it's similar to, this is my MacBook Air. Uh, so it's very similar size to my MacBook Air. In fact, thickness is, is similar as well. There's not much in it because you can take the case off this. So let's put that out of the way and show you how it works. So basically uh, the idea is that you stand it up a bit like a lot of um, iPad cases you see where they stand up in this sort of way. So a sort of tent model uh, and you can stand it up at various different angles, whatever works for you. Uh, and it all closes up like that. But also it comes away from this. So if you just pull, this is magnetic. So there's magnets in here and they attach to it really simply. So it's very simple to pull it apart. Uh, you can see that, well, you'll be able to see in a minute that the frame is really, really slim. On the back of it, we've got these four mounts and it's nice and light as well. There's not a lot of weight to it. There's no battery or anything in this. It still needs mains power. Um, but let's go for a different angle so I can show you the connectivity. Okay, so looking at the screen, on the right hand side, we've got a micro USB, two USB-C sockets, uh, and also a mini HDMI socket as well. Uh, there's two little tiny rubber feet here, uh, which are there to keep it in place. On the other side of the screen, we've got a rocker switch, which gives us all the settings. Uh, we've got a button, which is like a back button and a power button and an input switch button. And we've also got a three and a half mil output. Uh, we've also got a speaker on this side as well. And I think on this side as well, I'll soon find out if there's two speakers, but there's definitely two openings for speakers. Okay, so first of all, I thought I'd plug in a Raspberry Pi 400 because I thought it was quite a nice match for this screen. Uh, so I'm gonna plug that into the HDMI mini socket. Uh, so I've got a shorter version than the cable they gave, uh, which is uh, one of my own, which is micro HDMI to mini HDMI. So let's pop that in and then pop that into the Pi in the micro HDMI socket. Then what we need to do is provide power uh, to the monitor. So this is a USB-C connection and there's various different ways you can do this and I'll try and cover all of them. I've been messing about with this since last night. I've been having great fun because there's so many different configurations with this. This whole thing about having the two USB-Cs, the micro USB and also the mini HDMI is really, really versatile. So the extra thing I need, obviously my Pi 400 has no power at the moment. I've got a very short USB-C cable, so let's plug that in. Uh, it comes with uh, other cables, as I say, I'll go through the cables later on. So that's plugged in. You can see the power light has come on on the Pi 400. So let's spin that around so you can see it. I've got my wireless mouse to make it nice and neat. So we've only got one cable running from the power. So we've got the USB-C here. We've got the USB-C going from the monitor into the Pi 400 to power it. And uh, we've also got this HDMI cable. Uh, and as you can see, it's come up. So let's put my password in. And I thought this was gonna be Android, but uh, this is Fido S. Uh, I've got loads of uh, USB sticks and various things like that. So it's going a bit closer. So you'll, you'll see from this that I've got my mouse, uh, I can go to YouTube and obviously everything's working. Let's just get something playing on it. So we go for Lee, PSP, video and HDR, get something that looks really nice playing on it. So let's pop it back to the beginning and we'll pop it at 1080. Actually the, oh yeah, no, it's got 1080. Uh, pop it at 1080 and go full screen. And the sound is actually coming from the monitor. And if I want to change that, I've got a rocker switch here. If I push the rocker switch in, it comes up with this menu display. If I go down, I've got volume. And it's quite a comprehensive menu display. And you can see I can turn it up. It's not loud, um, but it's reasonable. So whilst it's playing something, let's show you the accessories that come with it. Comes with a USB power adapter. Comes with a USB-C cable, reasonably long, probably about a meter. Then we've got a USB-A to USB-C cable and a full-size HDMI to mini HDMI cable as well. So plenty of cables that come with it, uh, but I'm just using some shorter ones because I, I fancied making it look a bit neater. Now if we pause that, uh, so 
at the moment, uh, Fido S is uh, based on Chrome OS and also contains Android apps as well, is a touchscreen operating system, but the touchscreen's not working. And that's because of how I've wired it in. So if I want the touchscreen to work, I need to power the monitor separately and have a USB cable going from the keyboard to the monitor. That's how it gets its touchscreen support. And this is the same with uh, Windows and various other operating systems. Although that said, there are some USB-C devices that will pass it on. It, so if you have a Samsung Galaxy S8, uh, 8 plus, 9, 9 plus, S10, 20, 20 plus, 20 Ultra, Note 8, Note 9, 10, 20, 20 Ultra, uh, with DeX mode, then you can use it with literally just one USB-C cable plugged into your phone, uh, and then obviously power going into the monitor. That's a great way of doing it, super, super neat, and I'll show some pictures on the screen of that. Um, there are also other phones as well. I saw that the Lumia 950 looked really interesting, uh, which is a Windows phone. They, they don't do them anymore, but I just thought uh, it gives you Windows Continuum, I think it is, uh, where it uh, gives you like a Windows desktop on your screen. Also would work with that. Uh, and also quite a few Huawei phones as well, the Mate 10 Pro, P20, P20 Pro, RS. I'll put them all on the screen so you can see. Um, so more versatile like that, but obviously my channel is mostly about Pi and it's perfect for me to be able to plug a Pi into it or any other single board computer. So let's wire this differently. So let's uh, shut this down. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this USB-C cable. That's gonna basically give us touchscreen support. And I'm plugging it in a USB 3 socket because the uh, mouse is in the other one. Uh, so if I plug that into here, so that's going to give me touchscreen support, but now I still need power for here. And here is a USB A to USB C cable. So let's plug that in to give power to the Pi. So now you can see I can drag up from the bottom and I can use it like a normal touchscreen device. So let's try some other operating systems and see how we get on with that. Okay, so next up I'm using a Pi 4 and I'm running Android 11. This is Consta Kang's version and I haven't had to do anything about this as a display. Uh, it can be fussy as an operating system on different displays, but because this is going through ordinary HDMI, uh, it obviously reads it fine. So this is running from an SSD drive and uh, I haven't plugged in a keyboard purposefully. So let's scroll up and you can see if I drag up, it's going to ask me for the password, I'm going to put that in. There you go. And now I have ordinary Android with touchscreen support. Uh, so if I was to launch something that would uh, work with touchscreen, I would imagine something like this will come up with the buttons overlaid on it. And you can hear the sound coming through it as well. If I want to lower that because it's a bit loud. So I'm just going down to volume and volume and then let's just take it down to about three. It's nice to have um, sound on there as well, but also if you really want to improve the sound, obviously you can just plug in a speaker. So if I was to do that, I've got a three and a half mil cable here plugged into my Bose speaker. Okay, and I don't want to get a copyright strike for audio, so I'll do that. So hit play. Uh, so level four I haven't done yet. It's gonna be a di bit difficult because I'll be in the way of everything, but you can see that the touch screen is working absolutely fine. Everything's nice and responsive, uh, just not my skills. Is, it, is there a press and hold in it? Oh, look. So probably that, move it along. It's quite a good game, this. Oh, there's another star in there, look. But then if I slide up from the bottom, hit the home button, all the Android-y stuff is, is just as you'd expect it to be. Uh, and I also noticed as well, uh, if I plug in, uh, remember I mentioned that uh, micro HDMI, this is a, an OTG cable. And if I wanna plug in a USB stick, obviously the logical thing would just be to plug it into the Pi. But if there was some reason that I couldn't plug a USB stick into there, if I plug this in, and I've got an SD card in a USB reader here, so let's plug it. Oh, in fact, I've actually plugged in mouse and keyboard doing that. So let's just show you that mouse and keyboard would work in that sort of way. So you see, it, it uses it as an OTG device, 
or on the go device which is what android devices do so uh, i have that as an option as well that's also a way you can power it so you don't have to power it by usb c you can power it by micro usb as well so you see i've plugged that in and it's come up with uh, file explorer cx file explorer reads uh, the usb devices or tends to read them the best so there you go 128 gig usb so you can see I've got access to that device and if I wanted to open a folder, I can open a folder and go into that. So if I was looking for some ROMs or something like that, that's all accessible. So this micro USB socket uh, plus the USB-C sockets seem to be able to support data in various different configurations. It's I haven't really quite worked out how it does it, but it's very, very compatible. Uh, and you could make this look a lot neater. I realize I haven't made it look very neat because I'm kind of, especially with using contrasting cables, it's showing you where all the cables are going. So in this case, this is the one supplying touch. So that's going from uh, the Pi into here to give us touch control. So you don't need that. You could have mouse and keyboard, then you don't need that cable. Uh, this is the SSD drive, so I do need that for, for my data. But if I had an SD card, I wouldn't have it. The other two are power. This is coming from a power adapter. This is the HDMI socket. And then the monitor has separate power. So I could um, power this with this OTG cable. So I could plug a charger into that and that would power the monitor. And then I could unplug this USB-C cable, which is currently powering the monitor. It just seems to work. It, it, it's very, very clever. Right, let's try another OS. And here's Windows 10 uh, working on the Pi 4. Uh, running from an SD card, uh, I could remove this USB cable if I was going to run it just on mouse and keyboard because I've got my mouse and keyboard dongle in there, um, but I'm going to use it on touch because I wanted to show the touch screen thing a bit. So if I tap the Windows symbol, uh, I can then scroll up and down through the apps. I can also go into the tablet mode, which makes it more of a touch screen environment. So if I tap on tablet mode, uh, you can see a lot of this changes and it makes it more uh, what well, looks like Windows 8. Uh, where it gives all the apps and everything like that. So that's Windows 10, that also runs absolutely fine. Lots of, uh, of the Windows 10 apps support touch as well. And here's Raspberry Pi OS, which I know supports touch because I did my camera video on a very small touch screen. So say I wanted accessories and Raspberry Pi Imager, and all of that works with touch as well. And my favorite OS on the Raspberry Pi 4, Twister OS, also supports touch as well. And here's dual displays working on a 10 year old Mac uh, so if I drag it over to the right hand side, uh, I can maximize it and I can start playing a game in full screen with touch whilst I'm doing something on the other side. So if I wanted the web browser, you can see that's working, uh, but also I can, I can play the game with touch. And I can aim, oh, not a good shot. And you can see that all the menus and everything work nicely as well. And here's that same Mac running Mac OS Catalina. And as you can see, I can drag from one to the other and I can use proper dual desktop support. Unfortunately, Mac OS has no support for touchscreen at all on any device. Unlike the Nvidia Shield, which does actually work with touch. Now I'd never used uh, Nvidia Shield with touch before, but it actually works absolutely fine. Just needs that USB cable plugged in and also into the USB-C socket. And then you've got full touch. It's nice and fast for gaming, so if I launch, say, Bomb Squad, so all the movement's nice and smooth. I'll play some other games in a minute on something else. But you can see it looks great and performs nicely. And here's my iPhone running with the official Apple HDMI adapter uh, just plugged into the monitor. The monitor just has power plugged into it. Uh, you can see I'm running GTA on there at the moment, so if I move back a bit, and I'll show you the controller, so I can, I can look around nice and fast. I can jump back in the car, and you can see the, the screen seems to refresh nice and quickly. Always a jump there. Meant that. Uh, so also, if I scroll up, I can go to Minecraft. And all the menus are controllable by this Mad Cat's controller. Uh, so let's go jump into a world, and you can see this all works nicely, perfectly nice to play. My Xbox Series S also looks great on it, so let's jump into a game on that. And I'll plug in my speaker so I've got a bit better sound. Probably would use headphones normally for this. 
yeah it feels nice and responsive everything's working as it should we'll jump out and have a quick go uh, I'm a bit further from the screen than I'd like to be because I'm standing behind the camera but it should be alright uh, let's see if we can get a weapon early on looks like one there <laughs> Well, there you go, it must be working all right because I've got two kills. Three kills. Some people in the distance, it looks like. Whoa. Oh no, I've, I've got in there. What is that? Jetpack. Oh yeah. Maybe just getting over water and stuff like that. Yeah, that's cool. A lot of energy. Oh, someone else is coming. <laughs> oh, well that'll do. That wasn't too bad. Five kills, I'll take that. Okay, and last up is my M1 MacBook, and that works great with dual display. Uh, you do need an adapter. It doesn't work straight off with USB-C, although some other MacBooks do. So this is a USB-C to HDMI adapter. It also gives you a USB-A port on there as well, and it allows you to power your Mac. And this was £12.39. I think I paid a bit more when I bought it from Amazon. But uh, as you can see from this, I can play a GameCube game on the right-hand side whilst I'm doing important work on the left-hand side. So I've got my Xbox controller, and you can see that uh, it's lovely and smooth. This is a game I play a lot, and it feels perfectly smooth with it. There you go. So side-by-side -side comparison with my M1 Mac on a similar setting, uh, you can see that both look decent, both look nice and colourful. I mean, obviously it's hard to tell through a camera. But the one thing that this uh, touchscreen does do really well on is from an angle, and it actually holds onto the picture really well from an angle. The colour, the contrast and brightness is really well maintained, even from quite an acute angle. Okay, so I'm back into screen capture on my Mac now. Uh, I've been really impressed with this monitor. I'm definitely glad that Wimaxit chose to send it to me to make a review on it because I will be using it. I'll definitely be doing some more videos on it. Um, I want to do some Raspberry Pi stuff on it, some dual monitor support and things like that. But just to go through some of the specs on it, so 14-inch, 1920 by 1080 uh, two USB-C sockets which can supply data and power uh, and also you can connect other monitors to it. Now I haven't tried that because I haven't got anything that's suitable but that, that looked interesting to me as well. Um, I like the way that it's got the headphone socket so you can plug your headphones in or a speaker in. Uh, it just is such a versatile screen. Great quality, great viewing angles. I really love it as a monitor. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.